this is Josh here from Cody Cove Fruit Farm and Nursery and today we're talking about cassava. Um, cassava is a crop that we've been able to learn a lot about over the years and something that uh, I hope to share more about. So this is just the first of several videos that we'll be making about cassava. Um, we've got a lot of different varieties that we want to share and highlight and um, information about growing cassava. But a reason I'm so passionate about um, cassava growing is that it's my opinion that in Florida, or at least in our part of Florida, Central Florida, this is probably the most reliable um, staple food for calories that you can grow in this area. It's definitely not any of the major grains that I'm aware of. And the other competition would be true yams, sweet potato, and taro. And of, of those four major tropical root crops, Cassava has an edge on the other ones in terms of just being ultra reliable. Um, now, a lot of people in Florida grow cassava under the name yuca or tapioca or other names even. Um, but a, a real problem that I see is that a lot of people, they just say, yeah, I have cassava or I have yuca. And there's not a, a broad sense amongst people um, of the importance of genetics between one variety and the next. Um, cassava is a really diverse crop. It, uh, somebody that's smarter can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong here, but as I understand, cassava originates from the kind of intermediate zone in the Brazilian Amazon in between rainforest and dry. Um, so it has tolerance to hot, humid conditions and wet and also uh, to drought. And it's an interspecific hybrid of a number of wild species. So those species have contributed probably in various amounts to different, you know, traditional varieties that are, which are very diverse all through Brazil and Paraguay and Peru and other South American countries. Um, so what that means is there's a wide diversity in types of cassava um, from variety to variety. The colors of the flesh of the out of the bark of the root the forms and shapes of the plants the color of the foliage the shape of the foliage tolerance to drought or to different pests and diseases and most importantly for a lot of home growers is the um the variation in cyanide content um in the roots which is a video, uh, something maybe we can address in another video but they're broadly categorized as sweet or bitter cassavas with the bitter ones being high in hydrocyanic acids, which are what form into cyanide in your body. Uh, but today what I wanted to do is highlight two different varieties here that were planted on the same day, because I think this is a really good visual demonstration of some of the difference, the dramatic differences you can see between one variety and the next. So just because you grow cassava in your garden doesn't really mean that you probably have the best type of cassava that you could be growing. A lot of the common ones that are around seem to be okay, but in my opinion, not, not the best of what's out there. So we want to promote these new varieties. Unfortunately, a lot of them, they don't even come to us with names, so we have to name them. This one uh, does come with a name, and this is not a traditional variety that somebody just brought here. This is a, um, a cultivar developed by a Brazilian uh, breeding program. I can't remember the name of the breeding program off the top of my head. Um, but it's called CMC40, and it was bred by this program and specifically with drought tolerance in mind because there's a lot of cassava growing areas of South America and around the world where drought, uh, drought tolerance is a really important um, factor. This is also a sweet variety, so you can simply boil it and eat it, and it tastes very good. Um, I would say it's not the very best quality of eating of all the varieties, but it's probably like a seven out of 10 or something. It's a very good, mild, good textured, good tasting, non-bitter uh, type of cassava. So I wanted to show um, the roots that are ready on this and then compare it to another variety over there, just to show how widely varieties can vary from one to the next in their production. Another great thing about this variety is that it's early. That means it produces roots that are of good eating size in a, a smaller amount of days. Um, in Florida, that's really important because this is a subtropical climate. We only have so many days of the year that are hot enough for cassava to be in active growth. So if you have a variety that takes 14 months, which is common um, in some places, 
uh, you have four or five months of the year here where it's not really doing much growing. So that's not a good variety. This, I planted these cuttings of this and that the same day on April 1st. And in seven months, this was ready to actually eat, um, not as big as it could be, but there was, and then at eight months, it was definitely ready to harvest. Today, we're at about nine months. Um, it's almost January 1st, and these were planted on April 1st. So if my math is right, that's about nine months. And uh, well, I'll just show you, the production on this is awesome. And probably that's due to it's drought tolerance and us being in a kind of droughty part of the state might explain why this one outperforms the other so much and also just its propensity for early production. So to me, if I were to say right now to a homeowner in Florida, what's the number one cassava that you might wanna grow? This would be a good tried and true option because it tastes good um, and it produces early and it produces heavily. So it's really hard to uh, beat that combination. So we will be selling cuttings of this just in time for the planting season, um, which hopefully we'll have a link to whenever you're watching this. Um, and if in the future, this should be available um, on our web store. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you. Um, I've already kind of unearthed this a little bit. Um, so you can see the, the roots on this are, you know, just huge. And I'm going to go ahead and pull one up so we can see. I don't know how long they're even going to be. But this is very impressive for nine months in the ground. And again, this was not planted from a transplant, but a cutting directly in the ground. All I have with me is this machete right here, so this might be a little tricky. Okay. So... That's a really nice sized root, and there may even be some more in here. Probably not anything worth going after. Just little pieces. When you're starting to get yields like this, you don't really even bother cooking these. Um, so that's a really nice sized cassava. There might be 10 or eight or something like that, more of these all under here. Um, I prefer not to cut right into the soft flesh like that because that'll start to rot quicker. And we, were, we are gonna have to eat this relatively quickly. But um, if you look, this variety is distinctive. It has this pink bark underneath. Um, some varieties have this. That's to me an obvious identifier of CMC40 as it has this pink under it. The only downside we've identified to this variety is that it's harder to peel the peels just don't come off quite as easily as the other cultivars. Not a big deal, but it is, it is a factor of this variety. So let's go over, we're gonna look at this other one and just make a basic comparison here. So I don't have a, a variety name of this, but I named it Agroforestry because it grows so tall. It's the same age as the other, nine months. I don't know how tall that is. I would estimate 12 feet and it can get even taller in just nine months from a cutting. Um, I called it agroforestry because it doesn't have this wide spreading habit that competes as much with horizontal space for other species. So you could plant it in between trees. Unfortunately, this tall growing habit makes it much more prone to toppling over in wind. So you'll see you have a bunch of craziness attached to this because it already started to blow over. But what I wanted to show is the, uh, I'll go ahead and harvest it, because why not? The production on this is just not, not there yet compared to that and the same amount of days. So this one is interesting to keep around because it's unique, but to me, for a Florida homeowner, if you're just going to grow one type of cassava, why would you want to have this? And I think what's going on is a lot of people are just planting something random that they got from their neighbors. That's something probably more along the lines of this. Or something that they brought from Cuba that's a great variety in Cuba, but may not be the best variety we could have for Florida. So we will be selling CMC40. We also have other varieties that are excellent that I'm hoping to highlight. Um, 
I hope this was informative and that you'll consider um, purchasing some CMC40 cuttings from us and looking more into this um, variety. So thanks for watching.